Hello and welcome to the Elina Fieldhouse for game two of the 35th annual Elina Tip-Off Classic between the Shawnee Indians and the Elina Bulldogs. Tonight's pregame is brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. I'm Nate Garlock, joined alongside by John Zerby. And John, it is game two. Game one was exciting. LCC came away with a victory. They await the winner of game two. Shawnee and Elida, and I think a lot of people coming into tonight, they found this one, at least on the floor, to be the more compelling game. And just like everybody else, I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, both these schools, big rivalries in the WBL already, and they'll play later in the season. But this early matchup, I think, you know, when we looked on paper, we looked at LCC and Bath and maybe seen a few discrepancies. But when you look at Elida and Shawnee, there's so many similarities, and there's just going to be a lot that's going to that's going to happen on the floor that we're going to discover in the next uh, few minutes, and it's exciting to kick the season off this way, Nate. Well, let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game, starting first for the Shawnee Indians. Yeah, the Indians, I think the biggest thing is they got to push their transition. They want to get out and move the basketball and get points on transition off of defense. And finally, er, and secondly, offense on balance on offense. They got to get, you know, they have the Berkey boys, the freshman and a sophomore, but they want to have a lot of different guys uh, in the scoring column tonight so they can balance their offense. And then finally, using that high IQ defense. In other words, they've got a lot of guys on there, smart players, and making sure that they're playing aggressively, but smart. Tonight starts year three of Coach Tabler here at Elida. This is a team that he took over that was very young. He started freshman. He has been able to grow this team in his image and start finally getting them the way that they are going. And I think it's what a lot of people are excited to see. What are the keys for them tonight? Yeah, I love Matt Tabler doing such an awesome job. And I know if you talk to Coach T uh, Tabler, the biggest thing is he's going to say they have to play with great enthusiasm. they got to come out. And it's not only just the guys on the court, but the guys on the bench, the coaches, everybody, the fans. Just play with enthusiasm, act like you love the game, and a, and a well-coached Coach Tabler team always plays great defense. So he wants to see great effort defensively and getting after the ball, and you'll see a lot of pressure from the Bulldogs. And finally, rebound as a team. They can't have just one guy getting offensive or defensive rebounds. Everybody's got to chip in for them to have the opportunity to play tomorrow night in the championship game. We are only a few minutes away from game three tipping off. The gym is filling up. The community has come out. It is an exciting atmosphere here at Elida Fieldhouse. We'll step aside and when we return, we'll have tonight's starters and the opening tip on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial <laughs> services needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Tonight's starters are being announced here at the Fieldhouse for game two as the winner of this game will take on LCC in tomorrow night's championship matchup. But first, let's take a look at tonight's officials. Behind the whistle will be Tate Mayberry, Stephen McCray, and Jeff Klaus. Looking at the starters for both sides. They, we will start first with the Shawnee Indians as they will start number zero, Trevitt Berkey. Number two, Nick Pazon. Number four, Dominic Lynch. Number 23, Beckett Berkey. And number 34, Alex Goldsberry. On the other side, the Elida Bulldogs. They have some experience returning to this lineup, starting with number zero, Zori Island. Number one, Seth Sharp will also be starting. Number four, Amari Walsh. Number 13, Jackson Cobalt. And number 31, David Etzcorn. You know, and, and John, when you look at the starting lineups in, in general, I think that might be the thing that stands out the most to me is the experience. Even if it's not necessarily the age or the grade, it's the varsity right. minutes that that Elida lineup has played. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you look at some of these guys, Amari Wash especially, he's a younger guy, but he's played a ton of minutes over the years. Seth Sharp's another one, Jackson Cobalt played lots of minutes over the years, lots of experience, and they've had the three years with Coach Tabler, which, under the, you know, getting into his system, I think there was a lot of different expectations when Coach Matt Tabler took over, a lot of different style of play, and he's finally got his team that's that's used to his coaching and has committed to his offseason, and it's going to be interesting to see how they react to all those things put together tonight against a very good Shawnee team. And when you look on the other side, there's some youth over there. You have Beckett Berkey, had a tremendous freshman year coming in now with a little bit more of experience, a little bit more uh, seasoning underneath his belt as he comes in as that sophomore leader. I mean, that's really what he'll be on this team. And then you look at his brother, the freshman, Trevick Berkey, coming in. There is a lot of expectations on both of those players. It'll be interesting, at least here tonight, to see how they manage that. Yeah, and you, you hear the cliche, you got to grow up quick. Beckett Berkey is the leader of this team. He's the leading scorer. He's going to have to go out there and be a leader, not only on in, in, the, in the statistics, but on the court as well. 
Elida controls the opening tip, gets right to the rim. That one's no good as Amari Walsh wasn't able to connect. And quickly, Shawnee tried to get it back down the floor, but Dominic Lynch not able to gather that one in along the sideline. As you take, check out the Union Bank instant replay, Berkey comes up with the rebound and fed Lynch up ahead. And I think Lynch is going to be another one of those players for Shawnee that they're going to need to step up. He got a lot of minutes last year as a junior, coming in this year as a senior starter. You know, he has a lot of leadership from the football field that will come out here on the basketball court as well. But he is tough. He's tenacious. He gets after it. And I think that he's another one of those guys that Shawnee is really going to need to step up in order to be able not just to come away with the victory tonight, but as they move throughout the season. Yeah, and I think, Nate, as you, as you look and you come into the season, these are moments these guys have dreamed about. I mean, they've been waiting for these opportunities their entire life to get finally those leadership roles and to step into to those roles that they, you know, they've looked at guys growing up who've been the leaders of their school school and the, 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 the names of their team, and it's their opportunity finally to get to be in those positions. We're getting an extended look at Trevick Berkey right there. Did a nice job controlling the basketball, but got himself down on that sideline, tried the long pass and had it taken away. And then underneath, it's going to be Alex Goldsberry. As he is back with the Shawnee team, picks up an early foul on that shot as David Etzcorn is going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, I like how Elida's Amari Wash has been active defensively, already creating uh, some, some plays on transition. He gets the ball out to David Etzcorn, who takes it to the hole. Alex Goldberry did a really nice job of getting up and, and making that uh, block, but he's get called, he gets called for the foul that puts David Etzcorn at the free throw line for the Bulldogs. David Etzcorn steps up to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line, knocks down his first shot, second one on its way. That one's good as well. Elida out to the early 2-0 lead. As we're used to seeing out of Elida, they're going to show pressure right away after those made baskets. So Lynch trying to work against Wash, gets it up into the front court. Drops this one off to Berkey as Trevick looking for the offense. And right now they're just working along that perimeter. Here's Beckett. He tries to get to the rim. That one's in and out. Etzcorn comes up with the rebound. A little miscommunication there. Elida fortunately didn't have that one to go out of bounds. Maintains the possession as Walsh goes on to the attack. Drops it down low to Sharp. Sharp gathers it in, spins. One-hander over and in. I like Seth Sharp. He's a smart player, really good defensive back on the football team. Does a lot of things well. Uh, typically kind of like the, the silent leader out there. Another one here, Jackson Koval getting a steal. Another senior leader for the Bulldogs. Koval just reached right in and took that right away from Berkey. I don't think Beckett was expecting that as he gets all the way down. Get some contact as well. Going to go out of bounds. Last touch by the Indians. I think it was kind of up in the air if Jackson Koval would be ready for this game. He had an injury at the end of the football season that cost him the last few games of his senior year. Weren't sure if he was going to make it in time for the tip-off. Really glad to see him out there starting tonight. Here's Zori Island. He pulls up for three. That one's going to be no good. Fight for the rebound. Beckett Berkey comes up with it. Feeds it up to Lynch. Lynch goes to push the pace against Walsh. Tries to get to the lane off the glass. No good. But he's going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, really, really nice job by Dominic Lynch. He got up in transition, uh, got up to the to the to the rim, drew the foul. Now he's going to get an opportunity to go to the, to the free throw line here. Yeah, I think Lynch just needs a minute here. Looks like he might have rolled on that ankle, so going to re re and yeah, he's going to untie, retie, getting that shoe tightened up a little bit. Saw Coach Triplett kind of walk down, wants to make sure he's okay, as they know that they are going to need Dominic Lynch this year. When already, Nate, you see the physicality of this game. I mean, guys are going at it, and they're not holding back whatsoever. They go into the rim, and Dominic Lynch, nice transition there, took it to the rim, took a hard fall. It's good to see him up walking and now getting the opportunity to go to the free throw line. So Lynch is at the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. He's able to, or excuse me, does not get the first one to go down. I'll have a second shot, and tell you what, Dom is a tough kid. He's had, uh, you know, his his fair share of injuries has come his way from the football field, but he fights through them. And if he thinks he can go, he's going to go. He does not want to come out of this game, and he's going to pick up the quick foul. But the way he's moving, I think that Coach Triplett's going to have to get him out. He's battling. I mean, he, you can tell he wants to be out there, but it might be a good opportunity for him to take a seat and take a deep breath, maybe have the trainer take a peek at that ankle and maybe get retaped or a little bit of ice, but I really like Dominic Lynch's effort and his enthusiasm and passion for the game. Now Elida with the 4-0 lead, trying to add to it. Colvolt has to 
Stop quickly, drops it off to Walsh. Walsh works around with the right hand, kicks out to Edscorn. Edscorn, three-point try, no good. And Shawnee comes up with the rebound. They're both teams, you can kind of feel the jitters here. I mean, it, it doesn't seem... It doesn't seem relaxed. I feel like uh, the first game that we watched tonight, there was some relaxation on the court. Right now, I feel like there's a little nerves with all these people here. First game of the year playing against your rival. A little bit of nerves happening early. See Tate Bender had come into the game as he had checked in for Lynch. Not able to gather in that rebound. As Edscorn tried to get to the rim, Goldsberry was there to send him away. Goldsberry went straight up and down that time. Really nice block on Edscorn and gets a nice rebound here. And Alex Goldsberry almost gets the follow through. So I think some of those first game jitters you talked about as Edscorn's going to pick up the offensive foul there as Beckett Berkey did a great job of getting back, getting his feet set. Well, David Edscorn's an outstanding football player, but uh, he put his shoulder down and, and really tried to run Berkey over. Berkey did a nice job of, like you said, setting his feet and drawing that first charge. And, uh, as we look at this, Nate, fouls are going to be an interesting thing tonight. I think there's going to be a lot of things that in this game that the margin of error for each team is going to be is really small. So it's going to be the free throw. You know, how many fouls they have and how many opportunities they get at the free throw line could be the telltale sign of who wins. 4.59 left to go here in the opening quarter. I'd like to thank tonight's quarter sponsor, Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. We light on top, 4 0. Shawnee looking to get on the board on this trip. Back at Berkey, goes baseline, has to drop it off. Here's Trevick at the rim, and no good as he was met by Parker Krim, and he is going to get whistled for the foul. Yeah, I like the, the, the drive on the baseline. Good looking drive there by Beckett Berkey, and he kicks it inside to, to his brother, Trevick Berkey, getting his first opportunity here uh, to get some uh, points as a freshman, and he's going to get an opp another opportunity here, Nate. So Shawnee still looking to get on the scoreboard here in the first quarter. They're down 4 0. Trevick Berkey is at the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line and connects on one of two. Three point deficit. Here's Island. He goes quickly, loses it on the pass. Trevick comes up with it. But Krim came from behind, poked it away, and it will stay with the Indians. See, Coach Tabler already working the officials here early. Wanting that early call on that possession, but Shawnee will get it. You know, one name we really haven't talked much about is Zori Island from Elida. has been starting since his freshman year. You can see the defensive effort there. Uh, Zori now in his junior year. I, I think he's more of a leader now. He's going to be in that role. They're going to run a lot of their offense through him. It's going to be interesting to see kind of how he matches up uh, with uh, both Berkeys tonight. Tate Bender not able to get that pass off as he lost his footing trying to get it down into the corner. Ball goes out of bounds and back to the Bulldogs. Now we have some substitutions already early in this game, and you can kind of see here early that the first uh, starting five got on the court, got their opportunity. Now there's some other entrances here, and now we have some an opportunity for Shawnee on this turnover here to, to get on the scoreboard. Beckett not able to get it. What a hustle play that time by Tate Bender to get up and get that ball out of bounds off of the line of player. I believe he bounced that off of Evan Jackson, who had just checked into the game, and Talked about the substitutions as the, on the quick inbound. Tate Bender's going to get fouled. Bender's going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. But, you know, Elida quickly going to their bench. A lot of, they wanna, they're going to throw a lot of guys in there, try to keep them fresh. They want to play up and down. Shawnee doesn't mind playing fast, but I don't know how deep they're going to go on their bench this yeah. year. And, you know, obviously both Berkeys are going to play quite a bit. Um, each team right now has ten possessions, and each team has four turnovers, Nate. And so uh, the reality is is that it's sloppy right now. It, it's kind of ugly, and uh, teams are trying to find each other. But like you said, that's great if you want to play five or six guys. But early in the season, will that, uh, will that come into play here in the fourth quarter with not having these substitutions? The Bender not able to connect on either one of those free throws. Keeps it a 4-1 game. Four minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. Interesting enough, John, that was the fourth team foul already from Elida. Seems like a good point to talk about it. We mentioned it in the first game. And if you're just joining us here for the second, new rules this year went around the free throws as this one gets batted around, eventually ends up in the hands of Elida. And that one is up and in for Tanner Roberts. Yeah, Tanner Roberts did a really good job of getting that follow through, getting that offensive rebound, and putting it up here, really extending that Elida lead to five points now. 
But as we were talking about with the fouls, at five team fouls, every foul after that as a three-pointer goes down. Big shot that time for Shawnee. Yeah, Nick Paisson get on there and made a nice triple try. But, yeah, once you get to that fifth foul, Nate, you're going to go ahead and shoot two free throws. The, the bonus is gone. That that one and one that we used to know years ago ago is gone. It's going to be hard to get it. We don't even know the name for it yet. It's just the free throws, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. But uh, the reality is is that once you get to five um, fouls in a quarter, you'll, fr you'll shoot two free throws, and that resets every quarter. Yep. And so we've seen it in the first game where uh, the first time that, that we got to five fouls, everyone was a little unsure, like, are we supposed to shoot free throws right now? And once they got it figured out, it seemed to go pretty smoothly. And that, that um, came up right towards the end of that first quarter and then really didn't come into play the rest no. of the game. But, I mean, we had three minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. He lined up with already four fouls. We know they like to play that aggressive defense. They like to cause turnovers. That's going to be something to watch here moving forward if this new rule comes into play and, and weighs heavy. Well, and I think it's going to allow you to stay aggressive. I mean, as long as you can go deep into the bench as David Etzgord goes deep on the court with that triple. 9-4, to four, Elida on top after David Etzkorn's big three-point shot. Shawnee right now looking for a little bit of rhythm, trying to see if they can't get some of these shots to fall. Beckett Berkey, three-point try. That one's going to be no good as they continue to just be a little bit off. Walsh works with the right hand, gets it over to Roberts. Is Elida going to slow things down a little bit? Feed to the inside. Here's Krim. Works against Goldsberry, splits that defense. Nice job by Sharp getting towards the baseline, has to drop it off. Roberts has it blocked as Berkey was right there to send that one out of bounds. And both teams, you know, uh, just th 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 there's just a lot of rust here. And I don't think it's, you know, both teams have been practicing for a long time. I just, and when I say rust, I, I'm just, it might not even be rust. It might just be inexperience. I mean, Elida is an experienced team, but, you know, they haven't been on the floor a lot. And Shawnee, they have some experience, but they got a lot of new faces out there as well. So Alex Goldberry had checked out of the game. Max Goldberry had checked in for him. Uh, he was challenged right at the rim on that first possession. Elida gets it to go down for two. Well, David Edscorn's really been active, not only on the defensive end, but offensively he's been aggressive. He now is the leading scorer with seven points, seven of Elida's points. He's on almost lost that one. Bender gathers it in. He's going to drive, get some contact, and we're going to have a blocking foul called against Edscorn. That'll be Edscorn's second already here in the quarter. Well, he's been aggressive, like we just said, but that's what aggressive defense can do, is it can draw fouls. And, you know, it's one of those things that they're going to have to navigate early in this season, early in this game. How can you keep David Edscorn on the floor? Two fouls in the first quarter is not going to please Coach Tabler. So Tate Bender steps up to the Leeds famous recipe chicken free throw line. Had an unsuccessful first trip, but able to get that one to go down. Shawnee down six now, 11 to five, as Bender will have a second shot. What that also does, though, is get uh, Elida that five-team foul, so any foul at all from here on out, at least for the rest of this quarter, Shawnee gets to shoot two. It'll reset to begin the second, but with a 138 left to go, still a lot of gameplay left to go, and with the as aggressive as Elida likes to play defense, we'll see if they have to change the way they do things. I think you do. I mean, I don't think you can be as aggressive. I mean, you just don't want to put Shawnee to the free throw. And you used to be able to take a chance, and maybe they miss one, and, and it's a good defensive uh, look. But this now, when you're shooting two, you're giving them an opportunity to get a good look every every time down the floor. Amari Walsh admiring the job that time as he gets that one to go, extends this lead to 14 to six. <laughs> I'm not sure that Amari Wash called bank on that, but that's a good look for him. I'm sure he'll take it. Here's Goldberry at the top of the key. Moves it over to Trevick. Trevick Berkey back up to Matthew Stiles. Stiles' three-point try is no good. Zori Island comes up with the rebound. going to push the tempo. Wash, he's going to try the corner this time. That one in and out. Fight for the ball down low. Ends up in the hands of Beckett Berkey. And he's going to be fouled. This time it's going to be by Parker Krim. He's a little frustrated with that one. That's his second. And Shawnee will take a trip to the free throw line. Well, Parker Krim is a sophomore, and he looks the part. I mean, he, he's athletic, strong, physical. But just like David Edscorn, that's great, except the fact that, you know, at this time of the game, we, the, Elida's already in, uh, has that five foul limit. And so it's going to put Shawnee to the free throw line. It's going to give a lot of these Indians opportunities to score. Beckett Berkey's going to get his chance now. Beckett Berkey held scoreless here in this first quarter so far. Is able to knock down his first least famous recipe chicken free throw. 
They'll have one more. See if he can't uh, close the gap here a little bit before the end of the quarter. Good to see Dominic Lynch coming back into the game for Shawnee as well. Berkey second shot on its way. This one's going to be no good. Goldberry fights for the rebound. Gives Shawnee another opportunity. He tries to fight through some contact. No whistle. They let him play. Sharp comes up with the loose ball. Walsh going to slow things down with 40 seconds left to go. And drops it off to Island. One of the players I'm, I'm looking at right now is from Shawnee's Alex Goldsberry. I, lo I love his effort. I mean, underneath the rim, he is getting after it, uh, boxing out, getting extra opportunities for the Indians, and he's really provided a nice spark for Shawnee uh, early in this game. Under 20 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Zori Island letting the offense get to work, guarded by the freshman, Trevik Berkey. Experience against length. We'll see which one wins. Trevik. Let's Frizzori go through. The help comes from Max Goldsberry. He... Island kicked it down to the corner, and Cobalt gets it to go before the final buzzer to extend it to a 10-point lead. Elida on top, 17-7. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. John Stockter, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Second quarter just about underway here at the Alina Fieldhouse in game two of the tip-off classic. Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. And, you know, John, we talked about, we you know, we thought on paper this was going to be a good matchup. We knew experience was coming back for Elida. Shawnee still trying to work some through the things. They have some, you know, youth on that team. And I think, honestly, that first quarter was that story. You saw the experience against right. the youth. Took Shawnee a little bit to get going. They only made one basket from the floor. Everything else was the free throw line. And Elida really dictated everything. Tempo, yeah. pace, uh, everything that they wanted to do on defense as well. They sh overall, Elida just did a great job. Yeah, they really did. And they have this, this really nice 10-point lead. But I think if you're Shawnee, like you said, they only one made bucket. But they were 4 for 10 from the free throw line. So they got to the free throw line, just missed a lot of free throws. If you're Shawnee, I don't think you're discouraged by uh, being down 10 because you can do a lot of things better this quarter and really get back into this game. So Shawnee will begin the second quarter with the basketball. Trevik Berkey is going to bring it up the floor for the Indians as Island comes out quickly to provide some pressure. And he forces the turnover to begin the quarter, and Island is fired up. Well, you can see Coach Tabler getting fired up, too. I like the way Zori Island is playing defense here, moving his feet, and, and it just makes Trevik Berkey dribble. And I don't think he dribbled off his foot or anything, just the aggressive defense forced the turnover. Now Elida trying to turn some defense into offense here off the turnover. Colvolt drops it off to Island. Lynch takes over guarding him. As Berkey able to get his hand on that one, but too much of Walsh. And I thought he was going to get whistled for the foul, but I believe they said out of bounds first. So the basketball will go back to the Indians. That's a little bit of a surprise by Tate Mayberry to, to go ahead and, and, and make that call that it was out of bounds. But uh, Zori Island doing a good job there. It looked like he was maybe going to get the foul, and, and Elida was going to maintain possession. But it's going to be a turnover for the Bulldogs. Just underway here in the second quarter. Shawnee trying to find some rhythm on offense, but this Elida defense, especially this pressure, is causing them some problems. Lynch looks to go to the inside. Nothing there. Picks up his dribble. Shawnee just going to move it around the perimeter. Bazon drops it off to Berkey. Trevick has to get it back out as Lynch going to set the offense up. Right now, Elida just all over Shawnee. They're not giving them much space as they get a hand on that one as well. And even if they wanted to shoot some of these long shots, they just can't. There's just no space. Right. They're, they're doing a great job of moving their feet and creating opportunities here. Shawnee's going to get an offensive foul here. It's going to turn the ball over. Interesting call there by Jeff Klaus. Coach Triplett's wanting to know what is that call all about. Jeff is exp uh, explaining it to Coach Triplett. Nice turnover uh, for the Bulldogs there playing great defense. So Alex Goldberry had gotten taken out early in that first quarter because he had picked up an early foul. Picks up a second here in the second quarter, but looks like Coach Tripp is going to let him play through this one. Walsh fights through some arm contact, gets rid of it. Island lines up a three-pointer. That one's good. Zori Island from deep extends the lead to 20-7. to seven. Well, the ball movement was good there, Nate. You see Elida, uh, Amari Walsh dribble penetrates. He kicks it out to Kovalt. Kovalt finds uh, Zori Island wide open, and Zori Island nothing but net on that one. Seth Sharp showing you why he's such a good 
defensive back on the football field that time. And a little bit too aggressive, picks up the foul. This one's going to go out of bounds. And already two team fouls here in the second quarter for Elida. Or no, excuse me, one foul. That first one was offensive on uh, Shawnee on Goldsberry. So one and one for the team fouls. Javik Berkey. Knocks this one off as Amari Walsh is able to get his hands on it. And Amari Walsh comes up with the steal. He's going to go all the way in and lay it up for two. Yeah, and Coach Triplett's going to want to go ahead and get a timeout here. You see the athletic ability of Elida. The pressure. Watch Amari Walsh get the defensive steal here. Lays it in off a of transition, off the turnover for the Bulldogs. It's a full timeout for the Indians, so we'll step aside as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Coach Triplett and the Shawnee Indians take the Metzger Financial Services timeout as they have seen the Elida lead grow to 22-7. You know, and John, right now, just the speed, the aggressiveness of this Elida defense has just been too much for Shawnee to handle. You said it right, too much. Shawnee's had 19 possessions, Nate, nine turnovers. So over half of their, almost half of their possessions have been turnovers, not even getting a, a chance to get a shot off at the basket. So quick stoppage of play as something was rolled onto the floor. It looks like something from the stands just happened to roll out there. So the official stopped quickly just to make sure that there were no disruptions. Shawnee will keep the basketball. You know, right now, John, I'm not even sure what Shawnee needs to do to kind of get things going forward. We, you know, we mentioned still only one made shot from the field. Everything else has come from the free throw line. They're not getting a lot of space. They've got to find a way to create some space and get some openings to hopefully give themselves some easier looks at the basket as we see another foul go against uh, Elida. This one's going to be on Zori Island, his second. Well, I think as a coach at this point, what you have to do is, is basically go back to day one, two stuff. I mean, you have to get into the sets that you know that you're good at. You have to do things uh, fundamentally that you know that you're good at because right now you're struggling to find out who you are. Another three-point try up for the Indians, and it is just off as they have just been a little bit off. We've seen them come off the front of the rim with a lot of those shots as Amari Walsh slows down and then speeds it right back up to get to the rim. Amari Wash is all over the place, creates that turnover there. Seth Sharp gets it. Amari Wash, impressive player out here tonight so far. Sharp with the spin move into the lane. Berkey able to get a hand on that one. Here's Lynch, takes the extra step on the inside, and he's going to draw the foul as this one is going to go on Sharp. It'll be his second, and Lynch is going to go to the free throw line. It'll be the third team foul of the quarter for the Bulldogs. And that's, I think, one of the things Shawnee can say right now is they have done a good job of getting to the rim and drawing those fouls, but now that they get those free throw opportunities, they have to make them. Shooting 40% in the first quarter is not going to win games. Dominic, Dominic Lynch finally gets on the scoreboard as he makes the first of two Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throws. You know, we, we talked in that first quarter, we spent some time talking about the free throws and the new rule and how some of this stuff might come into play. If you look at it now, if we were still playing under the old rules, we're in double bonus time for Shawnee the rest of the way here in this second half. Elida, though, still has a reprieve. They still have two fouls to give before Shawnee will go to the free throw line. So right away you're already seeing kind of that dynamic and that right. change. You know, Elida still can play a little bit aggressive here in the second quarter. They don't have to back off quite yet. And, you know, and I think as we move throughout the season and we see this new rule come into play in, in games, that's going to be one of the bigger ones, uh, bigger things that we see is that change in those dynamics. Well, and I think if you're Shawnee, the only way you're scoring right now is to get to the free throw line, and they're going to not have those opportunities uh, to get to the free throw line, even though that uh, they just hit a triple there. They're not getting those opportunities to get to the free throw line because of the new rule. So Nick Pashon able to get that one to go down, able to step into that three-pointer. It's Shawnee a little bit closer as they're within 12. Colvault sends a three-pointer. That one in and out. Nice job on the offensive rebound by Eben Jackson, who went up high to get that one. And that's what Elida's going to need. I mean, Amari Wash had scored the last seven points for the Bulldogs. Uh, nice job there once again. Oh, now. Jackson throws it down. We saw the offensive rebound. Then the steal kept it himself and threw it down. Well, Evan Jackson just surprised us all, Nate. I don't think anybody was ready for that. And, boy, he's got the student section up and going. 
and bench up and going as well. Evan Jackson has arrived. Evan Jackson fired up, the gym fired up as he is able to go and put the big one down and put a big stamp here on this first half for Elinas. They're up big, 28 to 12. I love that. I mean, he was bringing energy when he came in in the first quarter, but no passiveness at all. Let's get the steal. Let's go get the dunk. Let's bring this place to their feet. Jonathan Payne checking in for the Bulldogs during that stoppage. He's out guarding Lynch. Lynch drops it off to Berkey. Berkey's three-point try is going to be off. Fight for the rebound. And that is going to stay with the Indians. They're going to say last touched by, I believe, Evan Jackson is who they said that went out on. Three forty-eight left to go here in the half. It has been all Elida so far as we have seen the offense come alive, but it has been the defense leading the way. That three-point try, no good. Rebound comes down to the Indians. They get a third opportunity. Berkey going to run the baseline. Pulls up for two. That one is short. And Elida one more time comes up with the rebound. Yeah, nice rebound there by Tranor Roberts getting the opportunity here. You also see, I like what Coach Tabler's been doing, getting other guys off the bench. Getting guys involved. He's playing 11, 12 guys at this point, Nate. So now it's going to be Coach Tabler's turn to take a timeout. We will step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Welcome back to the Alina Fieldhouse. Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. As we are in game two of the 35th tip-off classic. And so far, this game has been exciting, at least if you're an <laughs> Elida fan. And we've seen the defense get after it. We've seen the experience from Elida shine. And then just a few possessions before that, Metzger Financial Services timeout, a big dunk by Evan Jackson. Yeah, Evan Jackson surprised us all. I mean, it, he came out of nowhere and got an offensive rebound, and then a putback, and then immediately a score, and then a dunk. I'm a little surprised that, that this game has started off this way, Nate. I, I thought maybe Elida had... Um, the, the advantage as far as have veteran leadership, some, some players who have experience, but really Shawnee trying to find themselves right now and, and no real answers. It's going to be interesting in what adjustments Coach Triplett's going to put in here as we end uh, this uh, first half. See Tate Bender trying to get active, trying to knock that one away from Walsh. Walsh able to gather it up in. And I think offensively right now, one of the issues you're seeing from Shawnee as this one gets poked away, Ed Scorn able to gather it back in. He's going to dribble that out of bounds. It'll go to the Indians. Nice defense by Dominic Lynch there. But it's they're playing from they're playing outside in right now, and nothing is opening on the inside because they haven't been able to hit the three pointers. We have seen two go down, but other than that, there's really no big threat from Shawnee or at least that Elida fears. So there's no reason for them to go out. No reason for them to guard it. No reason for them to to think that they can't kind of pack it in on the inside and. With the size of Shawnee, that's what they would like to do, and they just can't get to the rim right now. Well, and, and, and you, you said it really nicely, Nate, that when you're struggling to shoot from the outside, it's definitely not going to open up the inside. So the only way that if, if this style of offense can become effective is that they got to start knocking down shots, especially they're getting good looks. They're just missing shots right now, and they need to start knocking down buckets to, to really shrink this lead. So David Edscorn is going to pick up his third foul of the half. It is the fourth team foul for Elida. And that's a costly one, not just because he picks up his third one, but it wasn't a great shot by Nick. That one missed the, everything. He just kind of was off on that one. But now on the scrum for the loose ball, the, the whistle gets blown, and Shawnee is able to maintain this possession. Yeah, and Edscorn was one of the first ones right out of the gate. He had seven points right out of the gate, doing a lot of the things offensively and defensively. Now he's been on the bench the last several minutes and not something that Coach Tabor would have wanted, although he's going to get a turnover here. A little bit of a mental mistake that time by Lynch as he shuffled his feet as he was trying to get himself in position. Another turnover for the Indians. Well, and they've struggled with turnovers, and fortunately we have our uh, master statistician, Mark Schein, beside us giving me all the good stats this evening, but turnovers have been the big thing. Right now half of their possessions have been turnovers, not even getting a good look at the hoop. 2.30 left to go in the half. He lined on top, 28-12. Amari Wash with the basketball. Gets it around to Koval as he lied to... Being a little bit more meticulous now as this one gets poked away. Bender plays it up ahead off the right hand, gets it to go down. Yeah, Tate Bender doing a really good job playing good defense. Uh, Jackson Kovalt tried to go around him. Bender stole it, gets the, gets the bucket. Really a, a nice pick-me-up for the Indians here. Wash, he's going to try to get to the rim, goes baseline. That one's going to be no good as Dominic Lynch knocked that one away. And I believe he's going to get whistled for the foul. 
It looks like uh, Wash is going to get the opportunity to go to the free throw line. He drove the baseline, and Dominic Lynch was not having any of it. So it's going to put Amari Wash at the free throw line here to allow the Bulldogs to, to maybe lengthen their lead. So Amari Wash steps up to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line to shoot two. His team has the lead up by 14. First shot on its way, and it is no good. Substitution coming in for Elina. Number 11, Mason Dayhill checks in. See Zori Island's going to take a seat. Seth Sharp also waiting to check into the game, and he will. Well, and if you're Lida, one of the things that Coach Tabler's done right now is he's played a lot of guys. Looks like he's played 10 guys so far, getting a lot of faces on, uh, on the court. His style of, of basketball, that pressure style defense, you're going to have to have a lot of players on the court. And so he's mixing it up right now and getting a lot of substitutions. Not able to connect on the free throw as Lynch brings it up, working against Walsh. Lynch drops it off to Berkey. Berkey, open shot. That one's no good. And those are shots that you're just not used to seeing Berkey or most of these Indians miss. Offensive foul coming. Bail Shawnee out that time. Great job by Berkey to run the floor, get back, and get his feet set after that missed shot. Well, they're, they're missing shots, but one of the things they are doing, Nate, is they're hustling back. I mean, they're getting back on defense, not giving Elida easy transition points, and they have created a lot of turnovers because of offensive fouls. And, and that's one thing that I guess if you're Coach Triplett here as we're winding down here in the second quarter, something you can talk about, one positive thing you can take into halftime. Here's Bender, gets cut, cut off on the baseline, has to pull it back out. Trevick Berkey now moves around, trying to get it to Lynch. Walsh not giving him a lot of space, though. Catch and shoot for Berkey, and it's good. Trevick Berkey gets into the scorebook off the made shot. And that is his first field goal of the game. Pulls. Felt Pulls Shawnee a little closer. I felt like that set was Shawnee was much more patient, Nate. They didn't rush it. They got they had a couple open looks and didn't take them. And finally, Trevick Berkey gets a really wide open look and knocks down a triple. Dayhill looks for some space. Has to try to create. Drops it off to Colvault. Under a minute left to go here in the half. Walsh on the back door. Got away from Bender, but a great job by Shawnee's defense to collapse. Initially, but then Sharp doing a nice job underneath to pick up that contact. Yeah, it's a really nice job of Wash finding Sharp. Sharp underneath. He got Max Goldsberry to leave his feet, and then Sharp went ahead and tried to uh, make the shot. Got fouled. Now he's going to have the opportunity here for two free throws. So Seth Sharp able to make the first of two Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throws. Here's the second shot coming up. 41.3 left to go here in the half. Elida in control. Sharp's second shot is up and good. So 30 to 17. 37 seconds left to go. We'd like to thank the quarter sponsor for tonight, Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. Lynch looks to go baseline, pulls up for two. That one's good. These last two possessions, Nate, looks like a Shawnee, a, 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 the Shawnee teams we've seen in the past. I mean, the sets are better. They're a little bit smoother. Uh, Lynch did a really nice job of coming off the dribble and pulling up for the jumper. As Bender reaches around, picks up the foul on Wash. That is going to be the fourth team foul for Shawnee with 7.7 .7 seconds left to go as Tate did not want Wash to have a free run to the basket there to end this quarter. Yeah, interesting foul there. Uh, they had one to give, and so uh, he went ahead and, and made sure that Wash didn't get, it. like you said, a clear shot to the hoop. But like I like said earlier, they had one to give. Now then any foul from this point forward is going to be two free throws for either team. So Sharp will trigger the inbound for the Bulldogs. Ends up in the hands of Zori Island. Island going to move quickly, works against Bender. Nice job moving on to the inside, shot's no good. Trevick just heaves it down the floor, not going to hit anything. That is going to bring the first half to a close. Shawnee right now down 11, 30 to 19. 
Elida in control. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse. Second half action just about underway here in the second game of the inaugural, or not inaugural, excuse me, the 35th actually tip-off classic. It's the opening of the high school basketball season here in Northwest Ohio. It's a great way to get things going and a great way to tip things off. And, you know, we've seen two very good games, you know, but that first half, it really seemed like Shawnee was just kind of always right there but couldn't quite get going. Elida was there, just always kind of you know, push them down whenever they needed to. Towards the end of that second quarter, though, we started to see Shawnee define a little bit of rhythm. Yeah, and, you know, there's a couple timeouts that Coach Triplett made there, and I thought they were good timeouts. Just trying to find themselves. You know, the inexperience starting to show up young. Um, I wouldn't say they just unsure of themselves, but that last three to four minutes there, really critical. Turnovers were a major problem, Nate and miss free throws. I think if they can fix those two things, they can find themselves right back into this game, only down 11 at halftime. Yeah, surprisingly, with as much as we had praised Elida and what they had done in turning defense into offense, you know, it would sound like Shawnee was way out of it. And it looked like for a little bit there that Elida was about to run away and hide, but Shawnee did a nice job of, of bearing down, kind of digging their heels in, and they kept it at least close, so they give themselves a chance here entering this third. But, you know, one of the things is, and I, we got to look, you know, we had an injury right there at halftime that we didn't able to catch on camera on that last possession. And right now, I don't see Zori Island. Yeah, Zori Island came off of the court. They, they carried him into the locker room. The good thing is I do see him over on the sideline warming up. He's not starting, but it's good to see Zori Island moving a little bit. Hopefully, he can get the opportunity to get back on the floor here in the second half. So, Elida will begin with the basketball. Seth Sharp now has it. Looks to feed inside. Parker Krim. Has a double team come right away. Berkey takes that one away. We're going to have a jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Indians. Well, and already you can see Shawnee with that aggressive defense, and I think that's something that they need to do this half. If you're looking at the first half, you know, early on, uh, Shawnee committed 12 turnovers and only gave up eight. So the reality is, is that if they can turn that turnover margin into their favor, I think they can get a lot of better, a lot better opportunities at the rim. Quick pass to the inside. Alex Goldberry has it poked away, though, and he'll stay with the Indians. Pass it to Beckett Berkey. He lets the three-pointer go, and that is a great way for Shawnee to begin the half. Shawnee shot 25% from the field in the first half, Nate. Already they're, you know, come out firing Berkey. That has, you know, that lead was 14 at one time. It's only eight right now. Well, we talked that they, they were getting themselves some open shots on the perimeter as that shot by Walsh is going to be off. Fight for the rebound. Comes down to Berkey. Crimp over the top. No whistle. They'll stay with the Indians. Here goes Lynch. Was able to get his defender off his feet. They're going to talk about whether it happened on the floor or in the process of the shot here. We'll see what the officials decide. And it looks like Dominic Lynch is going to go over to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line to shoot two. Yeah, and well, we, but we talked about Shawnee in, the, in that offense. They were trying to play from the outside in. They weren't. Those shots weren't falling, so there was no reason for Elida to vacate any space on the inside. And that's big because... Shawnee were getting shots, they just weren't falling. If they start falling, Elida's going to have to adjust, and it may open some things up for Shawnee. Yeah, they're going to have to extend their defense already. You know, Trevick Berkey hitting that big triple, and then both Berkey's, uh, you know, moving it down the, the court and giving uh, uh, Pashon the uh, opportunity, excuse me, Dominic Lynch the opportunity to get to the free throw line. Good signs from Shawnee in this, this second half. Lynch goes one for two at the free throw line. On the other end, Parker Krim's going to be fouled by... That's going to be Alex Goldberry. That is going to be his third. He was in foul trouble in the first half and picks up a quick win here in the third. And as Parker Krim is going to make a trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Yeah, Parker Krim's one that's going to get the start this half because of uh, Zori Island working on his knee over there. And uh, I really like the effort by uh, Parker Krim. Misses this free throw here, but does a nice job of, of getting Goldsberry off of his feet and getting himself to the free throw line. Krim's second shot on its way. And this one is good. 31-23 here in the third. Trevick working against Amari Walsh and that constant pressure from the Elida defense. Schoen working against Sharp. Drops it off to Lynch. Lynch has some space. 
Head fake, step back, shot on its way. That one's going to be no good. Goldsberry does a nice job to get that rebound. No good. That's Sean on the putback. That one doesn't fall, but he's going to go to the free throw line. Already you see Shawnee not turning the ball over, getting good looks, but getting offensive rebounds. Now getting their second opportunity to go to the free throw line. Already I feel like the, the tide has shifted a little bit, Nate. It looks like Shawnee's the aggressor here, and Eli is kind of unsure of what they're doing. Sean's first free throw is good. He'll have another one coming from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. It's his first make that wasn't a three-pointer tonight. Is He was really about the only bright spot from the field for Shawnee. Able to get the second one as well. Well, and I don't mean to quit harping on it here, but now that 14-point lead is now six. I think if you're Shawnee, and it's quiet here. Everybody's doing their third quarter, you know, concession stand break. I think if, uh, you know, the Elida doesn't wake up here, they might find themselves in a tie ball game soon. Well, you got to imagine that Shawnee locker room was <laughs> not, not a quiet one at halftime as Coach Triplett couldn't have been happy with what he was seeing. They've clearly made some adjustments, and it's working here in the early going. This one's going to get poked out. Last touch by Shawnee. Yeah, and I like the adjustments that Coach Tripp has made. You know, even if they're small, just as far as calming guys down, they just look like they are more confident. They look like maybe they've eliminated some things they were trying to do and focusing on a few things. I just feel like they look like a different team coming out here in the third quarter. Mario Walsh with the basketball, top of the key. Works against Lynch. That's scoring. Gets into the lane. He's going to get fouled as Goldberry now is going to get whistled for his fourth foul. Tonight's quarter sponsor is Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. David Escorn steps up to the Lee Samus Recipe Chicken free throw line and knocks down his first. Well, Eli is going to substitute Zori Island back in, which is good to see, but, you know, I... I, I don't it's it, the, it'll, it'll come out here in just a minute but you know without having Zori Island on the floor which I, I think he pretty much played the entire first half Elida looked kind of confused and so now getting uh, their leader back on the floor it's going to be interesting to see how they respond as Gorn stays perfect from the line he's four for four here on the night as it is back to a nine point deficit we'll see how Island can move now on that knee Got a mismatch on the inside as he was guarding Berkey, but Walsh takes it, goes all the way in, and back out to a double-digit lead for the Bulldogs. And turnovers with the Achilles heel for the Indians in the first half. Immediately, Amari Walsh gets a turnover, gets points off of it, and now pushes that lead to 10 points. Lynch, a little bit of hesitation there along that baseline to try to see if he couldn't get some space, but a nice job by Parker Krim to come across and send that out of bounds. Yeah, I like Parker Krim, what he did there, not only because he made a block shot, but he went straight up, Nate. He, didn't, he, he did swat at him, but he was straight up and down and really made a great defensive play. Ten-point difference, Elida on top, catch and shoot for Lynch. That one's going to be no good. Ended up in the hands of Goldberry, but he couldn't hold on to it. Lynch gets it back, drops it over to Berkey. Berkey, he's going to drive. Uses the right hand off the glass and gets that one to go down. Beckett Berkey, I think he's going to have to dribble and, and penetrate. And you've seen there he created off his, own er, off his own penetration, getting to the hoop and getting those points. Another turnover for Elida as Edscorn loses that one. Pushes it ahead to Berkey. Berkey in the lane, loses it. They're going to have a whistle, and this foul is going to get called on Zori Island. Shawnee's doing a really good job of getting to the free throw line, drawing those fouls, and we haven't hit that bonus situation yet. And in the first three fouls for Elida this quarter, they've all been shooting fouls, so Shawnee making the most of the fouls that Elida is committing. So Beckett Berkey's going to go to the least famous Earthby chicken free throw line, able to knock down his first. Berkey only one point in the entire first half, already up to six points here in this quarter. Second shot on its way. This one's going to be no good. Trevick not able to get it in. Knocks it down into the hands of Etzkorn, who gets it over to Island. Island looks to be moving well. Doesn't seem to have any ill effects from hitting the ground there towards the end of that first half. Krim in the lane. Nice shot. And I think that is a product of Goldsberry knowing that he cannot be aggressive as he's carrying those four fouls. Yeah, and I like what Parker Krim did there. Fundamental. Nice drop step and, and, and drop to the hole. And, boy, Beckett Berkey's come. I mean, he... 
there must have been a conversation at halftime. Maybe Dad, you know, chimed in there too. <laughs> and and he has come out and just been aggressive, taking the ball to the hoop for the Indians. So Berkey with the and one opportunity. He'll take a Lee, same as recipe chicken free throw. 424 left to go here in the third. Beckett's first shot on its way. That one rattles in. Back to a six-point deficit, 37-31. Shawnee making a run. Island with the basketball, working against Trevick Berkey. Goes around with the left hand, drops it back off, ends up in the hands of Sharp down in the corner. Sharp looking for somewhere to go with it. Here's that scoring. Gets Pash on over off his feet, but can't get that one to go down. Max Goldsberry comes up with the rebound. Yeah, good defensive stand by Shawnee, allowing Eli to only one shot. And boy, Nick Bashan really drilled that shot, and Coach Taylor is going to get a timeout here. Step in three for Shawnee, makes it a one possession game. Coach Taylor takes the timeout. It's a 30 second timeout. So we are going to stay here as well. And as Coach Taylor takes that Metzger Financial Services timeout, he can feel that momentum shifting, and he's got to get his team together and try to regroup. Well, I felt like it was slow early. It was, you know, those opportunities by Shawnee to get to the, to the, to the free throw line. They've got 15 points now on nine possessions, which early in the game we talked about how often they had the possessions and were just committing turnovers. Now they're getting points, Nate. And real quickly, eliminating those turnovers, hitting foul shots, getting penetration, has cut that 14-point lead now to three. And what they're finally also doing is getting those three-point shots to finally fall. We'll see if Elida makes an adjustments and start challenging those. And if so, where that counterpoint will be and if Shawnee can start getting things going on the inside. This is the fun part about basketball. It's just the chess match between coaches. Like, what can you do? Now you see Shawnee bringing a little bit of full-court pressure here against the Bulldogs. Trying to see if they can't maybe fluster, fluster Elida, give themselves a couple extra possessions. But Elida does a nice job of breaking that press. Amari Wash with the basketball. Elida is just con content with moving around the perimeter, not trying to force anything. Head score down in the corner. Thought he was going to let that one go. Decided to pass that one off. Evan Jackson wide open in the middle. I think even he was a little shocked when he turned around and there was nobody there, and I think that threw him off a little bit. Yeah, he kind of stutter-stepped and, and, and maybe decided a little too late by the time he, he went to the lane and went for the shot. Shawnee had already closed and defended. Tate Benders checked back into the game during that last stoppage. Gets that one over to Berkey. Here's Trevick. Trevick pulls up with the left hand. Can't get it to go, but he's going to make a trip to the free throw line. As it looks like Evan Jackson is going to get whistled for the foul. I think this has just been critical that all the fouls that Eli has, has committed this quarter have been shooting fouls. And now they're in this bonus situation where Shawnee's going to just get to the free throw line. And when you're shooting two and not just one, obviously you have to convert, which they haven't done a very, you know, a, a great job at tonight. But they are getting points instead of turnovers in these possessions. Yeah, as this one if it continues to stay close as we move through the rest of this third, into the fourth, and late into this game, it'll be interesting because these free throws, and especially these missed ones, obviously, could loom very large for the Indians. Trevick is able to go one for two from the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Makes it a two-point game. I like Corey Island. He was met by Max Goldsberry. Sends that one out of bounds. I say I like both Goldsberries. They're giving a great effort, and I, and I want to say that was the, like the little bit of the spark that I've seen from Shawnee. It started on the defensive end. They've been smart defensively, only creating uh, two fouls so far, but just playing uh, like high IQ. I talked about it in the pregame. Just high IQ, getting steals, not uh, committing uh, uh, turnovers this this half, and really, it's really changed the landscape of the entire game. You know, we talked about the experience of Elida. You know, we had some um, youth here for Shawnee. Right now on the floor, freshman, sophomore, two juniors, and a senior. You know, Shawnee, though, they seem to be growing up quickly here tonight. Things started off slow, but they are finding their groove. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, listening to Coach Triplett talk this week is really about high IQ, and, and he felt like if they could get past the physical stuff, they would learn from things. And Obviously, they've picked things up and already been make, already been able to make really good adjustments in just one half of play. Sharp shot goes about halfway down before it comes back out. Still a two-point game. Elida, or Shawnee, excuse me, has an opportunity here to either tie it or take the lead. 
Bender works against Colvolt, goes baseline, throws that one up with the right hand, and it goes down. We are all tied with under two left to go here in the third quarter. Elitis just struggled, struggled to get anything going, and Shawnee's just battled back. I love what Shawnee's done and the adjustments that they've made, and now they're going to get an opportunity to take this lead, Nate. Zori Island's layup comes up a little bit short. Bender on the aggressive side, stops in the lane, turn around, no good. Rebound down to Edscorn, ends up in the hands of Island. Island looks like he wants to push. Gets into the lane, going to let this one go. Right there, Bender to turn it around. Great defensive stand by Tate Bender. Yeah, Tate Bender has been just a spark. I really love what he's done defensively. Getting a steal earlier in the game and then getting a stop there uh, with the stuff. He probably doesn't block a lot of shots, so he's probably feeling pretty good about that one. Now Shawnee with 107 left to go in the third. An opportunity to take the lead for the first time tonight. Beckett Berkey, turn around jumper, and that one's good. Shawnee does take the lead there on top, 39-37. Yeah, Beckett Berkey, he's been everything this half. He's done not only things defensively, but offensively he's been sharp, pushing this Shawnee, uh, to, Shawnee Indians now to their first lead of the ball game. Here's that's going floater in the lane. That one hits most of the rim, doesn't go down, but Evan Jackson there for the putback. Evan Jackson can get up. We've seen that earlier with the dunk in the game, but he plays really well around the rim. Quickly by Lynch getting to the rim. Can't get that one to go down, but he's going to make another trip to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw lot. Tell you what, Lynch, too, very early there in that first quarter, we saw him go down. He was hobbled, wasn't moving around real good. Looked like maybe he was going to have an ankle injury. Wasn't sure if we'd see him the rest of the game. Got himself righted, came into the game, and he has played a great third quarter so far. Yeah, and I think he's he's one of those guys that just brings energy to the team. You can see that he's a natural leader. Um, and he's one of those guys that maybe isn't going to be a scoring leader, uh, but he does a lot of the unseen things on the court. I like the, you know, the timeout that they got him off the court and, and let him get his, tape, his ankle retaped. He's had halftime now to ice it down and let that adrenaline settle down. He's really played a strong third quarter. Right for the loose ball. He's going to stay with the Indians as Coach Triplett had made some wholesale changes here towards the end of the third quarter. Wanted to prevent any other fouls uh, for some of his players. So nice job by those guys coming in and maintaining this possession. Well, right now, Shawnee's just outplaying Elida. It's as simple as that. They're, they're more aggressive. They're getting after it. They want it more. And you can see the momentum has completely shifted in this game. Here's Cole Vault. Now it's Elida with 20 seconds left to go. See if Coach Tabler wants them to take the last shot. Shawnee tries for the trap, gets it down to Jackson. And Bender going to grab a hold of him, have the whistle blown. It's only going to be, I believe, his second, and it will be only a third team foul as well here of the quarter. So kind of slows things down for Elida a little bit, let Shawnee's defense get set. Yeah, and Shawnee's got another one to give. I mean, that's one of the things here that, you know, they, they've been smart defensively. They haven't created a lot of fouls. They can, they, can make a, they can cause a foul here if they need to in the last 10 seconds. Here's that scoring. Had a big first quarter, looking to score here. Goes baseline, up and in for Shawnee. Bender with one second left to go. Lynch lets go of it, and no good. That brings the third quarter to a close. Shawnee came out of the locker room on fire. They erased the deficit. We're tied, going to the fourth, down two. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial services needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'd also like to thank tonight's free throw sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, or home style, happens here. Fourth quarter just about underway here at the Elida Fieldhouse. It's the nightcap of the tip-off classic we got Shawnee against Elida. And Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. And, John, coming out of halftime, it looked like this one might get away from Shawnee. We saw glimpses towards the end of the second quarter. Weren't sure what kind of adjustments they made, but Coach Triplett pushed all the right buttons and Shawnee right back in this one. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest things they did is they've cut down on their turnovers. They committed 12 in the first half, only two total in that third quarter, giving them a lot of opportunities to score points. That scoring three-point try, no good. Parker Krim. Grabs a hold of that one, and as he tipped it, it ends up going off of Ashon. The officials are going to get together and talk about it. 
And they are going to change their call, it sounds like, and the ball will go back to the Indians. I know Coach Tabler's not too happy about that, but that's just good officiating. Jeff Klaus, Tate Mayberry, Stephen McCray, all really good, high-class officials. These guys have done tons of games in big environments. Um, they, got, they got some of the best here tonight. Trevick Berkey, the freshman, brings it up, gets it into the hands of Lynch. Extra pass, push on, three-point try. That one rattles in and out, no good. Amari Walsh comes up with the rebound. And, you know, as I look at that third quarter, I'm thinking back on, I don't, I don't think Elida was relaxed. I think they were stunned. I mean, it was almost like they were shocked that this was happening, and they were playing like it. And I think Coach Table is trying to get their attention because creating, the, you know, they can't afford to have these turnovers in this tight game at this point, and they got to get something going offensively. Right now, uh, offensively, they're just sputtering. And another mental mistake that time as Tanner Roberts just lost the basketball. Looked up to see where he wanted to go with it. Bounced it off his legs. Another turnover for the Bulldogs. Berkey catch and shoot three. That one's good. Beckett Berkey, I'll tell you what, he can shoot from anywhere on the court. He's got such a nice stroke, but we've also seen him take the ball to the hole. If you're Elida right now, I think you got to make a change defensively. Beckett Berkey had one point the entire first half. Ended up with 11 in the third quarter and up to 15 for the game. Some substitutions coming in for Elida. Evan Jackson coming in. He's had a nice night. Jackson Cobalt checking back into the game as well. Cashon having to go out. Looked like he went to the locker room hobbling. He may have an ankle injury. He's had some big shots for Shawnee tonight. They'd love to be able to get him back here in the fourth. And another whistle. This one's going to go out of bounds, and it'll be against Bender. Well, we've seen parts of this game for Elida that have been good, and we've seen parts of this game that have been ugly. And same for Shawnee. We've seen the ugly, and then we've seen the good. So this fourth quarter will be really interesting, Nate, well, within a one-point game to see how this thing finishes out. Mario Walsh drops this one off the crimp. He can't handle it. Does a nice job of keeping it alive, but ends up in the hands of Shawnee. Trevick Berkey, long cross-court pass. Gets knocked out of bounds by Evan Jackson. Evan Jackson's been a really uh, a good addition off the bench. He's come in, he's given some great quality minutes for the Bulldogs, and he's bringing some energy on the defensive end. You know, I don't know if a lot of people saw right there at that end of that play, but you know we talked about the leadership of this Shawnee team, and a lot of that leadership is going to come from a sophomore in Beckett Berkey. After that play, yes, it was maybe a little brotherly advice as well, but Beckett went over and told Trevick, I want you to jump stop on that one. Jump stop, then find me. Still trying to get his teammates up, trying to play better right in the middle of the game. You love that out of your players on the floor. Yeah, and you got to have that kind of leadership. It doesn't matter what age you are. If you're the leader of the team and you're the guy that, you, that the team turns to, it's your time to, to step up and be that leader that your team needs. That scores three on its way. That one's going to be off. Nice offensive rebound for the Bulldogs by Colvault. We're going to have a whistle. This foul, if it goes against Goldsberry, and it does, that is going to be number five for Alex Goldsberry. He is going to have an early night, not a lot of minutes on the floor, and he's going to foul out. Well, one of the things that uh, Shawnee, I, I, I feel like they've done such a good job in the third quarter defensively, but I think if you're a lot of you, you got to attack. I mean, you've got to get to the free throw line. you got to get Shawnee to foul and get into foul trouble because right now, that is where Shawnee is dominating. They're getting to the hole. They're getting to the free throw line. They're making shots. And Elida is just really uh, discombobulated at this time, not really doing much of anything as far as strategically. Shawnee with the one-point lead. They lose the basketball. Parker Krim does a nice job knocking that one loose as Eben Jackson's able to collect it. One-point game. Shawnee on top as Bender Garden Wash very tightly on that far sideline. Wash gets it to Edshorn, catch and shoot. That one's going to be no good. Edshorn with the hustle play, gets to the rim, and gets it to go down. Yeah, I love the set there, and I like the, the timeout by Coach Tabler there as well. Did a good job of getting that set, getting David Edshorn an opportunity to shoot a three. He missed it, but he followed it, getting the follow-up, leading the Bulldogs with 13 points right now. Full timeout by the Bulldogs as they're on top, 43-42. We're going to step aside, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. John Stockter, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for area high school sports fans. 
Coach Tabler takes the timeout after the great hustle play by David Edscore and puts Elina back on top here in game two of the tip-off classic. And we weren't sure what we were going to get tonight, and at times it looked like it, we may be looking at another blowout, but we have a potential classic tip-off game here going on tonight as we move through this fourth quarter. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think both teams have had growing pains. Both teams have had good moments. I really like the response by Shawnee. You know, they come out, they get down big, they resettle, and they just get back at it, and they climb back into this game. But now it's going to be interesting to see how Elida responds. We talked about them having this veteran team, and now with a one-point lead with four and a half minutes to go in this ballgame, Nate, it's going to see, be really interesting to see how this veteran team of Elida comes out of this. Deep down low to Beckett Berkey. Fall away, not good. And we're going to have... Out of bounds that time as Bender was fighting for the loose ball. Must have been out of bounds when he touched it, so it's going to go back to the Bulldogs. 4.31 left to go. You know, we talked about the uh, the new foul rule and all those things that came into play. We know that there's been a lot of fouls here tonight. We're in the fourth quarter of a one-point game, but because of the restart, Elida, zero team fouls. Yeah. Shawnee only two. That's a huge difference from what we're used to because fouls could be playing a huge part in this game right now if it was the way that it used to be. If my calculations are right, they had seven fouls in the, in the third quarter. They didn't. They stopped adding them to the scoreboard, at, but, but they would be, Shawnee would be in the, in, the, in the bonus right now, and they're not. They're at zero. It's going to take five fouls for Shawnee to get to the free throw line. Interesting uh, strategic uh, for the coaches, strategic game plan. Beckett Berkey's not worrying about free throws. He hits a big three, puts Shawnee back on top, and the Indians are going to take the 30-second timeout, and they may be changing this to a full, and now I believe they're just going to keep it as a 30, so we're going to keep it here as well. You know, it's been another exciting night here at the Fieldhouse as we have the uh, Tip-off classic once again. Game one, LCC versus Bath. LCC looked phenomenal. A great game by the T-Birds as they get uh, victory number one in the first year of the Coach Powell era. They await the winner of the game here tonight. And regardless of who comes out on top here, that, that championship game tomorrow night is going to be phenomenal. Oh, it's going to be such a cool environment. It always is. I, I love how they, they play the, you know, the consolation game first and then they play that championship game second. It's Kind of a, such a fun thing on a Saturday night. It's first weekend of December in this area. That's just where you're supposed to be is tip-off. And, you know, the, the reality is is that what a fun way to start the basketball season off with these four schools playing in this little tournament here. Lionel have the basketball coming out of the wow. timeout. They find themselves down to their largest deficit so far of this game. One of the key stats, I you know, we're looking at is Beckett Berkey only one point in the first half. He's got 17 in this half leading everybody right now with 18 points. He's come on fire this half. Another empty offensive possession for the Bulldogs as the ball is going to go to the Indians. They're going to look to try to see if they can't grow this lead. Lynch working against Walsh. As shown, we saw him go off. He's back in. That one rattles in and out. Trevick, though, able to get the offensive rebound, gets the putback. And it is a two-possession game here in the fourth. Uh, the both Berkeys. I mean, Beckett Berkey just did a fantastic job of attacking the rim and getting that rebound. Ed Scorn's three ball on its way. That one's going to be no good. Seth Sharp does a nice job of gathering in that rebound before we have a whistle blown. And I must have been off a foul as Alex Goldsberry is back into the game. So now he's carrying the four. So there must have been one that we accredited him early in the game that went to somebody else. I think they, they recently took one foul off from him and put it on Nick Pashon. So there must have been an uh, adjustment there somewhere on the books. Uh, maybe we missed it, Nate. Yeah, everything in front of me is very, very unofficial. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. These are the only stats I ever trust are those of Mark Shine, and I can't see his pad of paper. I was going to say, there. he's been showing me stats tonight, so I have nothing. He's got everything. Fortunately, he's been giving me some good ones. So, a little bit of sweat water on the floor here. They're working to get everything cleaned up. Zori Island awaits to inbound this one for the Bulldogs. High school principal Justin Furks doing a nice job of uh, doing his duty tonight. Sweat cleaner upper. They don't have that one in the job description during the <laughs> interview. <laughs> Here's Walsh gets it over to Island. Island's had a quiet second half. Ed scoring though has stayed busy, able to get to the basket that time and get Elida within two. 
Well, they needed that, and they need David, David Edscorn right now. He's really been out of rhythm because he had those three fouls early, but uh, they really need David Edscorn, not only him on the defensive end, but to get some points on the scoreboard. Here comes Elida. Edscorn one more time. Gets it over to Island. Island drops it down to Walsh. Three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be no good. Fight for the rebound. Ends up in the hands of Edscorn, and that one stays on the rim for about as long as it possibly could. And you see Shawnee trying to call the timeout. We'll see what they give him first. And actually going to call it travel as Trevick was over there ferociously trying to call the timeout. But the official was at watching the action on the floor. And a bad break for the Indians. Well, I think he was trying to rip the ball away from those Elida defenders that were trying to get the ball. But in the meantime, he was moving on the court. Interesting thing, Nate, is that, you know, it's been pretty quiet. I mean, Shawnee made a quiet comeback. All of a sudden, you can feel the intensity in this gym <laughs> as it's become very important as that two-minute mark is creeping up on us. Shawnee now, too, with, with uh, three team fouls as well, so we'll have to keep an eye on that as we get closer to this game. It's five team fouls. Elida will be going to the free throw line. Edscorn drops that one off. Looked like he might have had a shot in the lane, but gets it over to Walsh. Give and go, Amari Walsh. That one's no good. And Trevick Berkey comes up with the rebound. Elias had a couple good looks. Edscorn had a good look. Walsh has a good look. Just can't get it to fall. And that could have been a difference here with Shawnee holding on to this two-point lead. We reach the two-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Shawnee with the two-point lead. Shawnee just moves it around the perimeter. Here's Lynch. He drives up and under and good. Dominic Lynch with the big basket to make it a four-point difference. Yeah, now that pushes that Shawnee lead to 49 to 45. And the reality is, is that if you're Elida, you are really you really have to do something quickly here. Down four with a minute and a half to go. You've been ahead most of the game. You quickly got to get some points on the board. Here's Evan Jackson working against Berkey. Hands it off to Edscorn. Edscorn. Going to drive. Fights through the contact, and he's going to be fouled. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot two as David Edscorn will make a trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line, looking to make this a two-point game. Yeah, David Edscorn did a really good job of getting to the rim and trying to make something happen, but reality is is that you got to put points on the scoreboard, and these two free throws are going to be critical here with 1.24 to go in the game. David Edscorn with a big game, 15 points for the Bulldogs. He is their leading scorer. Can't connect on the first free throw. See Seth Sharp come back into the game for Elida. Edscorn's second shot on its way. This one's good. Three-point game, 49-46. The Indians on top, a minute 20 left to go. Lynch works in the backcourt, and a whistle for a timeout as Coach Triplett wants to talk about it. Going to be a 30-second timeout for the Indians. As I wanted, I'm pretty sure Coach Triplett at that time just wanted to make sure they maintained that possession. He saw the pressure coming and give his team a second here to kind of talk about things and Kind of set up probably what they want to do over this last minute without having to hopefully take too many more timeouts. Yeah, and you know, early in the season, you want kids to play through that, but it's kind of an interesting thing because it's a tip-off game and because there's a championship game tomorrow and you have a three-point lead, you're, you want to get a timeout and you want to make sure everybody's on the same page. You have timeouts to burn. I think that's a really good timeout by Coach Triplett here. You're talking about what can you do. Do you want to take time off the clock? Or do you want to get a good look? I look for them to be aggressive, but I look for them to also be smart and taking a good open look. Shawnee will inbound from the sideline. Beckett Berkey gets it into Lynch as Walsh is right there to give pressure. And Elida with that swarming defense comes over for the trap. Pashon will get fouled. And that is going to be just the second team foul for Elida. That is the third foul for Zori Island, though. Elida only five points in this quarter, which has really allowed Shawnee to, to take this lead and, and take control of this game. Here's Beckett Berkey. He has had a huge second half for the Indians. He's going to be fouled at Mari Walsh. And Mary Wa Mari Walsh just picked up his second foul. So Elida with a lot of fouls here to give with a minute eight left to go. So you got to think that they're fine with being aggressive trying to get a turnover here. 
And that's probably something Coach Triplett talked about was watch the defensive intensity, maintain possession of the basketball, be smart with it because you're going to get those, uh, those fouls and them trying to get steals. Pashon that time passed up an open look at three. So you got to think that part of that conversation also was don't take anything deep right at the basket. Trevitt can't get it to go but gets his own rebound, puts it up. Makes it a five-point game. And that's just an attribute of a kid who's played a lot of basketball. He misses the bunny, but he stays with it and gets a big conversion. And now Shawnee in full control with a five-point lead here with under 30 seconds to go. Coach Tabler's t imploring his team to hurry as they need points here. They didn't want him to hold the basketball any longer. And Amari Walsh takes it into his own hands, drives. Can't get it to go down, but will go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Yeah, you know, if uh, nice job by... Uh, he lied to get to the three-throw line on Mari Wash here, but if you're Shawnee, boy, that was a, such a good possession. They, they took a lot of time off the clock. They were smart with the basketball, and then they got a really good look for Trevick Berkey. It was a wide-open look. He did miss it, but he followed it to push this lead to five. And I, like I said, he lied to, even though they're a veteran team, they just seem kind of shell-shocked right now, not sure what to do, how to, how to handle this situation. And, uh, you know, from the stunning, uh, uh, you know, as they were ahead early in the game, and now they're down by five. And I'll tell you what, we talked about free throws playing a part, and we talked about all the missed free throws for Shawnee, but here down the stretch, Elida right now really struggling from the line as Amari Walsh misses both of his. The free throws, I, I know, you know, coaches talk about it so much, and we're going to get a good look here for Shawnee. And yes, Fashon they. puts that one down and all but seals this one for the Indians. Zori Island, though, going to try to come quickly. That's Sharp's three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be off. Walsh almost lost his footing, does a nice job to get back onto his feet. Edscorn passes it off, and that is going to bring it to an end. So even though Spess Sharp's shot goes down, all that does will make the final deficit a little bit closer as the Indians, they come away victorious, 53-49. We are going to step aside. We'll be back to wrap it up here on WOSN. Welcome back to the Atlanta Fieldhouse, where the Shawnee Indians in come-behind fashion Taking away the victory from Elida here in game number two. Take a look at tonight's Dolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. Check out the highlights of tonight's Dolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And honestly, it, you know, a lot of times you get to this point and there's some tough conversations and we kind of have to decide it. This one was actually pretty easy for us. Yeah, Beckett Berkey just turned it on in the second half. I mean, he... He was really the, the, the transitional player that turned it around for the Shawnee Indians. He finished with 18 points. 17 of those came in the second half, but the big stat, in my opinion, was he had 10 rebounds. So, I mean, Beckett Berkey did a fantastic job. His brother, Trevick Berkey, but Nick Pashone, Dominic Lynch, Alex Goldsberry, all these guys really turned it around. Shawnee showed a lot of grit in getting this uh, come-from-behind victory first game of the season. Yeah, take a look ahead to tomorrow night and a little bit of preview of the championship game. LCC, Shawnee, you know, after what we saw from LCC, I mean, I, you got, at least got to think they're probably the favorites going into that game, but the resiliency of the Indians that they showed coming all the way back and taking home that victory, it's going to be a great game tomorrow night. I think it's going to be an awesome game, and I think it's going to be a great environment. One of the things about LCC is, is right now they, they've got a lot to overcome as far as new coaching, but they've got veteran players, so they've got a lot to work with. Where Shawnee, I just feel like, they, they've had their coach, their system in place, but they got young players. They're only going to get better, and we've seen that. From first half to second half, incredible improvement. So I look for Shawnee to improve tomorrow, but it's going to be a fast, up-tempo game. Boy, it's going to be a fun championship game here at the Fieldhouse. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at the Atlanta Fieldhouse. Night one of the tip-off classic. It was a great night. Two fantastic games. The nightcap was even better. It came down to the wire. Shawnee comes away with the victory. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors one more time. Web Insurance, Union Bank, Do Dr. John Stocker, the State Bank, Metzger Financial Services, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, and Lima Chevy Cadillac. We appreciate you guys. Appreciate the crew as well working through us tonight. It is everybody's first night back in the gym. We're happy <laughs> to be back where it is warm. Basketball season is underway, and we couldn't be more excited. One final time, the Shawnee Indians knock off the Elida Bulldogs 53-49. They'll play in the championship tomorrow night here at the Elida Fieldhouse. For John Zerby, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.